This video is going to go over testing charging systems. We'll go over the base principles operation. We'll do it very quickly. This doesn't take a lot of time to test the charging system. The first thing I'm going to do is start the engine up, show you that this engine will charge. Then we'll bug it. We'll make it not charge. And we'll go through some of the different scenarios and test real quickly to diagnose the charging system. Make sure if you're running your engine inside, you do have an exhaust ventilation system to make sure you don't have any exhaust gas that's gonna be getting out causing carbon monoxide poisoning. Again, remember all your safety precautions. Anytime you're dealing with a running engine, have safety glasses on, have equipment that is rated for what you're doing the test on. Remember, we're still dealing with electricity, so always remember electrical shock precautions. Now, as you can see, the voltage on the battery rose in a very short amount of time. We want to run that voltage from 13.5 to 14.7 volts. That's typically what we want to see. Now, when it comes into your shop, the chances are it's not doing that. That's why it's coming in for a charging system test. This quick test can be run as part of your normal spring maintenance testing procedures that you charge for your spring tune-ups. That took me maybe 15, 20 seconds, but I found out the charging system works. The thing I would do if I was testing a system on a piece of equipment, I would turn everything electrical on, make sure that still maintains that minimum 13.5 volts when everything electrical is turned on and the engine is at full RPM. Next, we're going to duplicate a no charge scenario. So now I'm gonna start the engine up. We're gonna see what that battery voltage is, and then we'll start talking about the test we have to do from that point. Right there, we were at 12.35, 12.36, where basically what residual battery voltage is just sitting. We've got a system that is not charging. The next step to go after you get to a battery that doesn't charge, head to the voltage regulator. So most systems use a rectifier regulator mounted somewhere on the engine itself. So you need to locate that voltage regulator. This is where the next set of tests are gonna be done. A lot of manufacturers will want you to unplug the voltage regulator, take your voltmeter, turn it to volts AC, and they want to test the output of the stator itself. On this particular engine, I have two white wires and I have a purple wire in the center. Our AC leads are the white wires in the outside. Put your two voltmeter leads into the outside, turn your voltmeter to the volts AC position, the AC means we're gonna be testing the alternating current coming out of this alternator. The rectifier regulator is what rectifies it and converts it into DC current. So we're going to volts AC. Go to the appropriate repair manual. Your repair manual will tell you what the output of this system should be. Most 12, 15, 20, 25 amp charging systems, 30 amp charging systems, you need a minimum 28 volts AC here. So we're gonna fire this engine up. We're gonna see if we're getting 28 volts AC out of the stator. Now, 
did we have a minimum 28 volts AC? Most definitely. The faster I ran that engine, the higher that AC voltage climb, and we actually hit over 50. I've had a lot of people call me and say, well, Brian, this thing is overcharged, and it says it needs to be 28 volts minimum. Well, isn't 20 or 28 volts, isn't that less than 50? Isn't 50 over 28? That's fine. It doesn't matter what it's putting out as long as it's in excess of the minimum. The regulator is going to take care of dropping that voltage down and regulating it to our 13.5 to 14.7 coming out for the battery. Since we've tested this, the next test we have to do is going to be on the center post of the regulator, which is our B+. Our B+, is going to be our battery voltage. We got to go back to voltage DC. Black lead on negative post of battery. Red lead on the purple wire, the center post here. You want to key it on. And you're going to see for my particular test right here in the voltmeter, I really have no reading at all. You'll see that I really have no reading at all. Now let's go ahead and start this thing up anyway. And then I'll discuss what's going on. And this is one of the main typical phone-in call problems we see on charging systems. You'll see I didn't have anything. A lot of people stop right at this point and they'll say, yep, my charging system's not working. They'll throw a regulator on it because I got AC voltage coming out. I got nothing coming out of the regulator. What they forget is that's the B plus wire. When we have zero volts here, that means we have no connection to the B plus down at the battery. Even if it was charging, it couldn't get to the battery. Well, people are wondering, well, how come this regulator isn't turning on? it needs five volts from the outside to turn the regulator on. With zero volts, the regulator doesn't turn on. It's not self-igniting, it's not self-charging. So we've got to have battery voltage there to turn it on. With nothing, you can throw all the parts on here you want. Now, one other test I like to do is going to be do a test on the case of the regulator. This particular engine has a laminated blower housing, which means it's metal. We have a ground wire on here, so that does give us a little bit of a deceiving condition. Most of the Kohler engine regulators are mounted to a plastic blower housing. They have to have a ground wire. If that ground wire is missing, we will not charge. All right, what I've done now is I've actually unbolted a regulator to duplicate no ground. I've repaired my power to my center post of my regulator. So you now we're going to see we have our voltage on our voltmeter again. You're going to see that we're at residual battery voltage, that 1235 range. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ground my voltmeter lead and we take my red positive lead to the regulator case. Go up and take a look at the voltmeter itself. And you're gonna see that we have residual battery voltage on the case of the regulator. It's varying, 9, 10, 11 volts. Could be just how well I'm pushing my voltmeter lead on here. Most people's minds tell us, if I have voltage in the case of this regulator, this regulator is shorted out. I'm getting voltage to the case. It's not the case. It's the fact that we're applying the five volts from the outside minimum, which 12 volts is over five, but the regulator's not turning on because it doesn't have a source to ground to turn the regulator on. So again, that's another important one, and you can do this test. I've had a lot of people call me, well, Brian, I plugged a regulator in, it still doesn't charge. Well, yeah, you plug it in like this, you don't bolt it up. So when you do that, you'll also get that no grounding. So grounding is important on the regulator. Our number one problem, no voltage to the center post. 
If you have no voltage in the center post, trace your wires back. Find out where that purple wire goes. A lot of times they go through key switches. Key switches over time can only handle so much current. Most key switches are rated at 15 amps. So once you run enough power through there, you'll burn the contacts in those switches. Now I'm gonna turn the fan off, make it a little bit quieter so we can talk about some more tests. Let's say when I was doing my AC voltage test and I said I had needed 28 volts minimum previously. We had 50 volts plus on this test. If I'm below 28, one of the other tests you're gonna to wanna to do is shut the engine off Turn your voltmeter to the ohms test and then do a continuity test between the two white leads. You want to see if there's any continuity at all or if you have an open. If you have an open, that would mean our stator winding has a break in it. All a stator is underneath of this flywheel is one wire wrapped round and round and round and round and round and round and round an iron core coming out the other side. It's just one continuous loop of wire. That means when we check this, we should have full continuity from one terminal to the other. Here I'm showing you 0.2 ohms on the ohm meter. That's a good reading. You always want to compare that to what the repair manual tells you you should have. One thing that a lot of people forget to do is measure the resistance of their terminals. What kind of reading do we get there? Subtract that number from the reading you get when you're going across the two terminals. Another thing people often forget. When I'm grabbing these terminals alone, I am getting a reading. Some people would look at that reading and say, man, that's 131 ohms, Brian. They forget to look at the little bitty K on the right-hand side of the meter. Now that K could be the right side, could be the left side, could be an M, that's meg ohms, K ohms, thousands ohms. You take that number times a thousand. But our human bodies conduct electricity. We're comprised mostly of water. So when you are touching leads with your ohm meter, you can vary that reading. You got to make sure you keep your fingers off of the leads themselves. So that is an important factor thing to remember when you're doing Ohm's resistance test. When we're dealing with something like a stator, not that critical because we should be virtually zero. It's one continuous loop. But there's other electronic component pieces on that engine, on that lawnmower that potentially could give you an issue of falsifying your readings just by having your fingers on the leads while you do your tests. That's just a little tip, trick, when you're dealing with this. Now, if you have an engine that is low voltage on your AC leads, you have gotta take it apart. If you can't build that 28 volts minimum, you've gotta take it apart. A lot of times I'll have people call me up, Brian, I can get a reading from one lead of my AC to ground. You know, I'm getting 20 volts AC out of it. Doesn't matter unless your repair manual for that charging system tells you to go from a stator lead to ground. Otherwise, you gotta remember, this is one continuous lead. It doesn't go to ground. If you get that reading from here to ground, you're probably getting a reading that the voltmeter is too sensitive and it's picking up that ghost voltage. So don't rely on that. Always go by what the book tells you when you're dealing with a two wire charging system, you go from wire to wire. There are some engines out there now that have a three wire. There's a third lead on the stator. They're a high amperage output. What you have to do is test from terminal one to terminal two, AC voltage output. Terminal two to terminal three, AC voltage output. Terminal one to terminal three, AC voltage output. Check the repair manuals because you have three windings within that stator to get that maximum output of some of the newer charging systems. Again, low voltage, you've got a stator bad if it's AC coming out. Zero voltage, less than five, you don't have any power going to your purple wire. If you've got good AC voltage, you've got 12 volts in their center wire, chances are you have a regulator. Don't forget the ground, make sure it is truly grounded. Replace the regulator, 
One thing I always like to do myself though, before I end up putting a regular on it, regulator on it is do one more AC output test. I'm gonna fire this thing back up and I'm gonna unplug it. I'm gonna show you my 50 volts. I'm gonna plug it in and I wanna see what I get with it plugged in doing work. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna fire this up. I'm gonna unplug it. I'm gonna check my AC volt output. Then I'm gonna plug it in and check it again while the engine is doing work, while the charging system is doing work. There's my 49 volts AC. Don't know if you caught it on the voltmeter, but when I plugged it in, I went from 49 down to 38 roughly. I didn't really catch what it was on the meter, but I did drop, but I'm still above my 28. So you will get a different reading unplugged than you do plug it in. Always plug it in. I've had a lot of other calls where, hey Brian, I got 29 volts coming out of the stator unplugged. I plug it in, I can't get any charging output. That would be because somewhere in the stator winding, when they took it apart and replaced the stator, there's a little bit of green fuzz, and this wire was just about discontinued, broken. It was just about disconnected. We could get AC voltage out of it, but we couldn't pass current through it because that winding itself was just basically eight almost in two. If it would have been run a little bit longer, it would have probably broken apart. We would have had absolutely no output out of this and that would have been a potential problem. So those are just some quick tips, quick scenarios on charging systems. Hopefully we simplified it a little bit. The one last big component though of the charging system, if your stator's good, your regulator's good, power to the, to the center post, the magnets inside of the flywheel. You gotta make sure they're good. You gotta make sure they're intact. Don't glue them back in. The problem with gluing magnets back in is you may get them out of the, impro the improper sequence. You're taking on the liability of gluing them in. They come apart, shrapnel flying out from under the flywheel. But the biggest factor is you don't know if you're getting the polarity properly aligned. Here I've removed two magnets from a flywheel. Actually, they had come apart. I picked this flywheel up from out in the field. And we're always taught that a magnet has two fields a North Pole and a South Pole, okay? So that means if I put this South Pole to North Pole, North Pole to South Pole, the magnet will attract. The crazy part about this magnet, if I pick it up, turn it half a turn, my poles attract. My poles attract. These magnets don't have a North and a South Pole. They'll have a North Pole, South in the center, North Pole in the end, and vice versa in the opposite magnet. So now it doesn't matter where you put them in series, right side up, upside down, if you're trying to glue them back in. But if you get them out of sequence and don't have them proper, you'll get magnets that I can't push together. Okay, this is where they snap to because the magnetic lines, the north and south poles, again, outside to center, south, south, north, 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 south, they'll grab like that. I can't push them together. I lay them backwards, they snap. The next two snap together. I can't put them in the center and I can't put them back to back unless they offset. So that's something that was talked about many years ago that they can do with magnets. And everybody just went, wait a minute, he's doing some kind of magic trick because there's no way you should be able to rotate it. So again, the reality is it's a legality issue. Don't glue them in, you're taking on the liability. They are put in by robots at Kohler. They're glued in place, machine comes down and it magnetizes the material after the flywheel is assembled. All right, again,
Any questions on charging systems, feel free to reach out to us at MeetArt at 1-800-888-7181 and ask for the MeetArt Engine Tech Department. Thanks for your time.